Hello friends, we're back. Episode 2. Today, we are going to talk about shutter speed using TV mode on the camera. Is That's not going to pull. Ah, TV mode. So, what is TV mode and what does it do to your camera? Why should I use it? TV mode allows you, again, rewind. <laughs> okay. Um, basically, this series is just some episodes on uh, how to use your camera different ways. Um, a way for me to explain kind of the, the fundamentals of photography and aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. Uh, last episode, we talked about ISO using program mode. Hopefully you watched that. If you haven't, go ahead and click up here. I'll have a link to that episode here uh, to kind of go over program mode, ISO, what it does, because this episode is a follow-up to that, teaching you shutter speed and how to use it. Okay, so TV mode, television mode on your camera. This allows you to change the shutter speed on your camera where the other values are set to, uh, well, your aperture is gonna be set to the automatic mode. Your ISO, you still have control over. For the instances of this um, demonstration, I left my ISO on auto mode, let the camera pick the best ISO while adjusting my shutter speed. So, let's get back into Lightroom and kind of show you what TV mode does. So in this episode, we're gonna be focusing on this value right here, one fourth of a second. So your shutter speed is how long your shutter is open to take an image. Right here, we're dealing with a fraction of a second, one fourth of a second. And this, in photography terms, is really, really slow. Now, if my camera was not on a tripod while shooting this specific image, you would see a lot of motion blur. Um, now what a lot of photographers think, they think they have a problem with their lens. Things aren't in focus. And then you'll go and you'll look at the, the image data, the XF data, you'll see their shutter speeds really, really low. And that's why their image looks so blurry is because the camera's shutter is open, I'm sorry, the shutter is open for so long that any slight movement is gonna cause a blur. And uh, I try and show that in a few of the um, images here. We'll really get into that uh, at the end here. Um, but yeah, so uh, the camera decided that at one fourth of a second, ISO 100 and F 2.5 was correct uh, that's to get a good image and you'll notice we got lots of detail in my eyes my face we don't really have the noise that we had with the ISO episode yesterday um, well not yesterday last episode we talked about ISO and what digital noise is and does okay so now we're speeding it up a little bit um, now this is not motion blur when uh, I zoom into this episode. This is because of a wide open aperture and we'll get into that next episode. Um, but all I did here was increase the shutter speed one stop and we'll continue to kind of increase it one image stop as we go along this set of images. We'll get faster and faster. So now we're at one eighth of a second. Um, you can see a little bit of motion blur in my eye, but that's more wide open aperture. We'll get into that next episode um, when we deal with more depth of field. Um, so for right now, things are looking good. Image, uh, image quality is low. Um, so a tip uh, for you, if you want, if you're shooting in a dark environment and uh, you need more light and you don't want digital noise, you can shoot at much lower shutter speeds if your camera is on a tripod and you're using something like a remote shutter 
or a cell phone to trigger your camera because then the camera is not going to move when you press the shutter button causing motion blur so if i was holding this handheld i would never be able to get this sharp of an image at one eighth of a second it would be way 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 too blurry um continue on one fifteenth of a second still really sharp tripod uh, and remote shutter lots of detail here we go keep going one thirty of a second same thing our ISO is changing a little bit. You'll see that it's increasing because our shutter is getting faster, not allowing as much light. The longer the shutter is open, the more light hits the sensor. So, here we go, 160th. Still lots of detail. This episode, I learned how to pull focus. And, okay, I missed it here. Uh, 125th. Uh, for this specific image, I did try to move uh, to get motion blur. Caused me to miss focus. I uh, didn't really get motion blur. Um, well, I, I, I did. Uh, you kind of see it in the face. His aperture fall off is in the background. Um, my face kind of moving a little bit. It's hard to tell. Um, a lot higher. Uh, ISO here, the noise isn't bad. 125th. One over 125th of a second. I'm gonna keep going a little faster. Ah. So, yes. I moved purposely on this one to cause motion blur. This image, I stood still. And you'll notice the difference in detail. What might look like out of focus elements is your motion blur and the actual detail when you stay still. So, something to keep in mind. One over 250th of a second. RIS is creeping higher. One over 500th of a second. And we keep going. One over 1,000th of a second. Now, This could be motion blur, but normally at this shutter speed, you won't see it. Um, I probably just failed to pull focus here. I'm not doing a great job. This episode. One two thousandth of a second. So, got a much sharper image, but we're held back by our high digital noise thanks to ISO. Um, our aperture is wide open to let in as much light possible, um, but to really capture an image that was um, had detail in uh, the highlights and shadows, the ISO needed to be correct. Keep going here, one four thousandth of a second. Even a high ISO value isn't really saving this image. Um, it would normally only shoot at this shutter speed if I was shooting an outdoor portrait, middle of the day, and I had some sort of uh, strobe light or flash to, to brighten my subject. Um, the reason for that is I want the most detail uh, as possible. And if my subject's moving, let's say if I was shooting uh, sports or let's say a band again, I want to shoot a very fast shutter speed to capture the details during any movement. And then finally, our max shutter speed, one eight thousandth of a second. It is barely, barely open. That is much faster than our start at one fourth second. So, now, so, there's barely any time to capture light in this image so the camera did what it could it cranked the ISO still wasn't enough uh, so if I was shooting in TV mode and I wanted a sharp image I would probably go down to 1 1 25th of a second I've got a very usable ISO an aperture that gives me a nice mocha background 
uh, and I got a lot of details on my face. If I wanted to shoot at one eight thousandth of a second, it would need to be very, very bright in the room. I would need to use a flash, some sort of off-camera flash, on-camera flash, something to put more light on the sensor to justify the fast shutter speed. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, we can set the shutter on the camera to open instead of fractions of a second or seconds at a time. And what that's going to do, that's going to allow more light to hit the sensor. Um, there are a lot of cool things you can do with long exposures. Um, a shutter speed that is a second or over is usually called a long exposure because um, you're taking an image over a certain period of time rather than a fraction of a second. You're not capturing that in instant. You're capturing a series of time. Now I stayed as still as possible, but you'll notice my eye is still not in focus. This is motion blur. Any fraction of a movement when shooting with a long shutter speed even a shutter speed like this so if I was shooting at one fourth of a second handheld it would probably look something like this there's just something off about the focus in this image and you'll see as I increase the shutter speed longer than a second that it gets worse now we're shooting at 10 seconds obviously I didn't stay still for 10 seconds this is some crazy motion blur going on you see my eyes moving all over the place. There are some really cool creative things we can do with long exposures. Now, what my camera had to do to get a properly exposed histogram was keep the ISO. It shrank it all the way down to 100, which is the base value that my ISO can hit on this camera and it really cranked the aperture all the way to f14 so the opening in the camera was very 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 small so there was barely any light that was let in but for 10 seconds uh it gave us a properly exposed image in terms of light focus not gonna happen so here's what happens when we leave the shutter open for 30 seconds um, this is kind of how I get some of my creative uh, ghost-like images. And I'll do a separate video on how to do it and take this concept, make it more creative, and get, um, get images that are usable when using really long shutters like this. Uh, you'll notice the camera really cranked the aperture. And then... I went ahead and I turned off all the lights to allow the camera to really capture the light and I tried to stay still for 30 seconds in this last image. Did a pretty bad job of staying still. Um, some of the models I work with and shoot long exposures do an incredible job of staying still so I can get a really solid image of them in focus uh, without this kind of blurry mess that's going on. So in an extreme case, this is motion blur. This is what slow shutter speeds do. Faster shutter speeds allow you for sharp images. So the main takeaway from shutter speed in all this, the faster your shutter speed, the faster the fraction, the sharper your image is gonna be. So as long as you can put your focal point where you want it to be, you're going to get a better image snapping photos at a higher shutter speed. But if you're shooting in a darker environment, you don't really have the option to shoot in a faster shutter speed. You're going to end up with stuff like this motion blur. Now, TV mode 
I normally recommend shooting something like this um, when you're trying to capture something like sports, something where there is a lot of movement. And what you'll allow TV mode to do is to set your shutter speed at a value, something like 1 over 250, where you're going to capture your subject in motion and the camera is going to choose the other settings to give you the best proper exposure based on your lights. And uh, it can really, like even with the lights off, it can choose a proper exposure for you. But if you're shooting too fast, sometimes the settings of your camera can't be helped and you're going to be left with the darker image. So, for action shots, I would say TV mode. Um, concerts, I wouldn't shoot TV mode in. And we'll go into that next episode when we talk about aperture and AV mode. Um, so, thanks for sticking around for this episode. Um, hopefully you learned something. Shutter speed can be your worst enemy. It is probably the hardest setting to learn. But once you kind of uh, understand it, it's going to make all your photos so much better. So I'd really spend some time, if you don't know what you're doing, playing TV mode until you can really figure out shutter speed. All right. And then we'll see you in the next episode where we go over aperture and everything I love about aperture. <laughs> okay. Talk to you later. Bye-bye, guys.